Gather round, children, gather round. It's story time with just the little writer. In case you didn't know, that's me. Walls of Disgrace. The Kemper Mansion was a house among houses, the oldest, biggest, and most stunning in town. It's where all the wealthiest and most powerful people gathered for dinner parties. Alana Dupree knew all about the dinner parties hosted at the Kemper Mansion because her parents dragged her to one every month. Every month, she was forced to go and made to sit next to Derek Palmer. Her parents and his were determined to get them together, but Alana was not interested. Derek tried to be friendly and charming, but Alana acted like he was invisible. He gave her compliments and asked about her day. She gave short answers if she responded at all. It was dinner party night, always on Saturday. Alana spent the whole evening trying to ignore Derek. Derek spent the whole evening trying to impress Alana with his grades and sports and scholarships. She didn't care. When dinner was over, everyone milled around talking about this and that. Alana wandered the hallways admiring the paintings on the walls. The one that stood out to her the most was called Born of Disgrace. It featured a depressed looking woman sitting up in bed, a proud looking gentleman sat next to her. At the foot of the bed, there was a cherub with white hair, gold eyes, and black wings. Derek came up behind Alana while she stared. Do you see it? He said, causing Alana to jump from fright. She stared harder but saw nothing of note. Look at their faces, Derek said and disappeared back into the chatting crowd. At the end of the party, an announcement was made. Alana and Derek had been chosen to stay the night at the mansion. Everyone clapped, except Alana. She begged and pleaded with her parents to go home, but they left without her. Alana was shown to her room and Derek to his. They were in different wings at opposite ends of the house. Alana was given tea, said to help with sleep. After the butler left, she locked the door and poured the tea out in the bathroom sink. At midnight, Alana was wide awake and still angry. She decided to go look around, as there were so many rooms that she hadn't seen. Alana made her way downstairs. She had seen blueprints of the Camper Mansion and knew that it had a basement. But where was the door? Alana turned the lights on and looked all around the main level. There was no door leading to the basement. Her parents had told her there was a movie theater in the basement. A movie would be great to help her sleep. Alana had just about given up when Derek appeared behind her. She didn't see or hear him. Derek grabbed Alana by the neck and squeezed until she saw nothing but darkness. Alana woke up in a movie theater. She had found the basement. Or did she? A black and white solid film played on the screen. Alana tried to stand, but her arms were bound to the chair. You didn't drink your tea, Derek said from the row behind her. You should have. He jumped over the row and took a seat next to Alana. The film stopped and immediately changed to a home video of the Palmers. It showed Derek as a newborn and his parents showing him off at the Kemper Mansion. Alana noticed that her own parents were there as well. Everyone in attendance wore white and gold clothes. They also wore gold necklaces with black feather pendants hanging from them. It's time to work, Derek said. You will give yourself to me, or you will stay here and write like the others. What others did he mean? Alana looked around and noticed that they weren't alone. There were four other girls in the theater. At least their skeletons were. You should have drank the tea, Derek said. You would have been asleep for this part. Decide now. Let me have you, or die here. Alana didn't want to die, and she said so. Derek applauded before releasing her from her seat and pushing her down to the floor. Alana closed her eyes and pretended that she was elsewhere. At home, at school, anywhere else. When he finished, Derek put Alana back into her seat and giggled. Let's keep watching, he said. We haven't gotten to the good part yet. The video continued. There was a time skip of about four years. There were four years between Derek and Alana. It was the Palmas again. They had a new baby. A girl. It was just them and the Duprees and four-year-old Derek. 
Mr. Palmer gave the baby girl to Mrs. Dupree. Mrs. Dupree held the baby close and said, Alana rang Palmer. No, Mr. Palmer said. Her name will be Dupree. She's yours now. Say bye to Sissy, Derek. Little Derek kissed baby Alana on the forehead and said, Bye, Sissy. Bye-bye. Alana was too shocked to speak. She turned to look at Derek. His eyes had turned gold and his hair white. He stood up to reveal black wings growing from his back. The painting flashed in Alana's mind. She could see it now. The faces. They were the same. I don't need tea to sleep, Derek said in a deep, monstrous voice. But thank you for waking me, sissy.